Alrighty, here we go. So this is uh, session 50 of Masana Harley of the Tep. Uh, and you guys are on your way deep into the great sandy desert of Australia. Uh, you've uh, picked up some picked up some supplies in uh, in Kankudgeri. You've picked up some trucks. Uh, you made uh, made friends. Managed to managed to convince a uh, Robert McKenzie to go with you, a, an engineer who had previously found the uh, the the site of the the supposed lost city with uh, with his friend. I uh, managed to impress upon him the importance of following through on the work, and against his better judgment, he is uh, he has agreed to uh, to travel with you. Uh, he has suggested that you travel until you get to the Canning Trail, which is a basically a cattle trail. Um, but the the big thing with the cattle trail is it has uh, regular water and fuel supplies. It's just a matter of getting there, which is several hundred miles across the open desert. Uh, you've got a couple of trucks with you, uh, loaded down with food and water and fuel, uh, kangaroo guns, various assorted things of that nature. Um, and you guys have, you're about a, a day out of Concutchery. Uh, and the vastness and the emptiness of the desert uh, is quite unlike anything that you're used to. Like, even when you were in the jungles of Kenya, there were still, like, jungle noises. Uh, oftentimes here in the desert, the only sound is the sound of the wind. It is truly desolate. Uh, you guys are on your way to this... Uh, uh, apparently lost city uh, where you believe there to be one of the uh, one of the gates that needs to be closed to prevent the cult from bringing up uh, an apocalyptic event uh, it is marked on your on your map just south of Percival Lakes uh, but what you'll find when you get there you're not entirely sure Chris you said we did hire people to come with us or is it really just us and the Duke it, it's, Which game I forget. it's you guys and Robert. You weren't able to find anybody else who was Robert. willing to go. It is a, it is a small group. Uh, the other thing, the, the main reason why you don't have anybody with you is the more people you bring, the more supplies you need to bring, which means you need to bring more trucks, which means more things can go wrong. Your, your plan was to, uh, to take a small party figure out what's going on and then if you need to uh kind of secure the site and then come back and bring people with you uh, but it is um well it was nighttime when we left you guys were just uh camping in the great outdoors a uh, little bit of disconcerting notion that the stars went quite right until you realize that it's because you're in the southern hemisphere um as opposed to the the northern hemisphere so the stars look a little bit off but not off in an abnormal way uh and uh we'll turn it over to you guys The last thing that happened was Gary seeing the distortion in the sky. Yes, Gary did see something distort the sky overhead. Like he could see through it, but it was translucent. Kind of like a like a heat shimmer in the sky that was moving. And Evelyn was driving. I'm not quite a fan of flying things over my head that I can't see. How many trucks did we have and who's driving which? Uh, you've got two trucks. I think Evelyn is definitely driving one. And then I think we yep. deduced that everybody else was equally bad at driving. Yes. So everyone has 20? 
I think everybody has the base 20. Uh, which is fine as long as you don't need to, you know, try to do anything under duress. Or that you don't get in a sand pit or. Yeah. Difference. Yeah, as long as Does you don't. Does Robert want to wanna drive? Uh, Robert is uh, not any better than anybody else. I mean, I can get around, but. Well, you can get around, and you're familiar with the area. At least more familiar than we are. I mean, it's a flat desert. You're just going in one direction, right? Yeah, he kind of he kind of looks around and gestures and said, "Like, don't hit that rock over there, which is like you know, as far as you can see off to the east, and don't hit that rock over there, which is as far as you can see off to the west." <laughs> We are a party of poor traveling buddies. I like this guy. I can drive. I don't know what's really your problem is. Driving is fun. Okay, so There's... let's go the other way around. Alvin kind of pulls everyone around and uh, 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 to figure out who the next driver is. And let's do the opposite. If we get in trouble and we need to keep driving, who would you rather have as shooting as opposed to driving i'm gonna say you shooting me driving right but you're already driving you need a second yes. driver for the other car well i suck at both about equally i'd say right but i'm much better at shooting than driving yeah, so you just can forget me doing anything substantial. That's what I mean. So Alvin is not driving. That means that Gary would be. There we go. There we are. I'm very sorry in advance. What about you, Gene? Would you rather him driving or shooting? Well, I would rather if Eugene is in the truck. Driving nor shooting, uh, I'd rather be in the other truck. That That's is fair. fair. So Eugene is with Evelyn. Gary, you're driving me. I'm sorry, and I will. All righty. So, yeah, and, you know, by the time you guys are ready to, to like, break camp and, and set off, it is already starting to get warm. Like, it's, like, when the sun starts to creep up, it goes from, like, kind of cool uh, borderline cold nighttime desert temperatures to like 20 degrees Celsius probably by like eight o'clock in the morning Oof. I mean on the plus side I guess it's a dry heat which people tell me is better uh, I'm not a hundred percent sure I believe them uh, but the Sun is up it is bright it is hot uh, there is like a there is a little bit of a breeze, kind of like dusting like some of the the loose sand around. Uh, as you guys make your way, yeah, it's hot. It is very hot. Um, and I will get whoever has the lowest luck in the party to give me a luck roll. Oh dear. It's gotta be Evelyn, right? I have 55. Uh, 32. Eugene has clawed his way up to 39. Always has to be my truck, doesn't it? So yes, yeah, so I need... You wanted me there. <laughs> Uh, so, yeah, I'll get uh, Gary to give me a luck roll. And it's not a success. Right. So you guys are driving along, and it, you're making what you assume to be good time. It's, uh, I mean, it, it's hard going on the on the desert, on the, the sands. It's the reason why you brought trucks and not, like, a car, because sometimes it gets a little bit stuck, and you got to, like, you know put some like wooden beams underneath the, the wheels to get them to kind of have something to catch on. 
um, Robert kind of shows you all the ins and outs of uh, dealing with a stuck vehicle and all of that sort of stuff as you travel. Uh, but around noontime, um, kind of in the desert, because I mean, it's a lot of flat, flat ground and like some small hills, but nothing that really obscures uh, line of sight. Headed in your direction, but not not on a direct path. Uh, you see what looks like a like a lone camel rider. And that's on a failed lock roll, so it's probably a good news. I mean, I'm guessing that Robert is with Evelyn. So they're in the lead car, and Gary and I, who are the, Gary, who's the worst driver, is not breaking ground. So he's probably following Evelyn. So I'm going to leave it up to the first car to decide what we do about that. Okay. Do we see this as well? Uh, yes. Okay. Um, Mr. McKenzie. Yeah. Are camels common in Australia? Oh, well, people use them for tra traversing the desert. It's better than a horse. Especially uh, horses with no name. <laughs> I wasn't aware that there were camels in Australia. Well, people bring them in. I mean, you guys could have brought camels if you wanted instead of the trucks. You just didn't strike me as camel people. Oh, no. No, I think the trucks are probably the better choice for this group. I know I'm certainly better in a vehicle than I would have been on a camel. I can't see that going well at all. Uh, but, yeah. Um, I mean, some of, the, some of the prospectors will uh, use camel back to travel back and forth from their claim sites. So I wouldn't say it's common, but it's not uncommon. That's a relief because I was beginning to think that I was seeing things. Oh, it's not nearly <laughs> hot enough for that yet. Oh, I grew up in a place much cooler than this. This is this is worse than any of our summers. Back in the day before we got heat waves in New Brunswick. <laughs> I mean, the place is worse than Jersey. <laughs> I mean, it's worse than a lot of places. Yeah, but Jersey. Uh, but yes, this camel uh, is continuing to kind of plod along its course. Like I said, it's not directly headed towards you, but it's definitely headed back the way you guys came from. Oh, okay. Do we have any binoculars in this truck? I would imagine so. Um, can you see if it's someone you know? Just that is so funny. Case. You Australians must know everybody. Eh? <laughs> oh yes, we went to school together in Sydney. It's like talking to Canadians. <laughs> Every Canadian knows each other. So yeah, Robert takes the binoculars and takes a look. Says, um, I "Can't make out much at this distance." Uh, lone rider. Saddlebags are not quite full, so probably on his way back for supplies. Should we prepare for something unpleasant? I, I'm, I'm eyeing at uh, Mr. Shooty Things there. 
you make it sound like I'm not always expecting something terrible to happen. I literally had a conversation with you about you should drive so I can shoot things. Yet you're not planning from for anything unpleasant because you want me to drive. I mean, I could shoot you. <laughs> But yeah. I uh, keep my weapon at hand, although not drawn yet. I'm right. really not fun to shoot at, I'm pretty sure. Well, you're uh, literally a sitting duck. Quack you. All right. And as you guys are kind of having this conversation and, and continuing to drive on, at a certain point, the camel does uh, kind of veer more towards you, uh, like they've spotted you and are making their way um, on camelback, mind you, to uh, kind of intersect you. Without changing course, I just sigh and pray, I think. My assumption is they're heading towards a lead car. Yep. Chris, what can I make out from this at a distance? I know that I, I'm, I'm not driving, and you said that there are binoculars, but is this like... And a, an aggressive man on a um, quadruped, or is like, is he brandishing a sword? Is he charging us? Like, on uh, a very pissed camel. Yeah. Is he? Is his he, Is his head flaming and on fire? Like, uh, we've seen all kinds of stuff. Like, is it Ghost Rider? It's not Ghost Rider. Uh, give me a spot hidden roll. Uh, so yeah, you, you kind of like grab the binoculars and take a look. Um, it, it doesn't appear like moving at a at a quick pace, but not charging. Uh, and the gentleman on the back, you can make out. He looks like um, he he's like pretty much like covered in like road dust and sand. Like he's been traveling for more than a couple of hours, probably a couple of days. Um. But he doesn't. Uh, he doesn't have any weapons brandish. He does have like a, a rifle kind of slung in the saddle of the camel, but it's not drawn. Is he is he with purpose coming towards us, or does he look behind him? Like is he being chased, and he's uh, looking for help? Uh, no, he is. Uh, he is focused on you. And as a matter of fact, as he gets closer, he kind of like, you know, holds up a hand and kind of kind of waves it, like maybe shoot he, him. Maybe he sees like the glint of your binoculars. He's trying to like catch attention. I tell Gary, um, if we pull over, don't stay behind, pull up alongside so we can also see what's happening and so we can intervene if necessary. If we're behind, we might not see bad things happen until it's too late. Yes, master, of course, master. I'll get um, are are we spotting this in the apparently lead vehicle? Yes. Okay. Uh, Evelyn will slow down. Uh, and yeah, after like 15-ish minutes, like, he does kind of like catch up to you. And as he gets closer, he does slow down. Um, and when he gets to like basically kind of shouting distance he'll basically yell out again like very very thick heavy australian accent that i am not going to attempt to do just like and he like shouts loudly so he's like a good like 100 yards away maybe a bit more he's like hey hey uh just want to just want to talk for a minute about what uh just Wondering if you maybe had a map. Maybe a compass. 
I'm gonna check my friends and just say, usually I do snarky stuff that would not be helpful, so I'm gonna just shut the hell up. I'm gonna let the talkers in the other car do the talking. Evelyn will look at Mackenzie and Eugene and nod. As far as I know, we do. I know we have a map for certain. Yeah, you have you have a map and compass for sure. Yeah, but do we have it for him? <laughs> it's like I just need to I just need to get bearings. Uh, I uh, lost my compass in a sandstorm, and uh, <laughs> I've kind of got no idea where I am right now. Uh, well, if you follow our vehicle tracks, you'll end up, uh, back in, oh god, am I going to be able to say this? Concudgery. Oh, okay, good, good. So I'm headed in the right direction, and again, he's shouting. Is there a storm coming? Oh, I don't know, maybe there's all kinds of all kinds of weirdness back there. I'm uh, I'm going someplace civilized. Maybe rethink uh, rethink some things. <laughs> Come, Kajuri is not a place for you then. Rethink some life choices. Oh. <laughs> But oh, it's civilized yeah. enough compared to the the desert, I mean. All right. Uh, you might have come a little closer just so we're not shouting. I'll follow the lead car. Evelyn will look at Eugene and... Mr. Mackenzie, say I'll trust the two of you to make sure he doesn't try to kill us or something. That would be a first. Okay. And uh, Evelyn will put the car in, in her truck in park. Not turning it off, but maybe not in park. Maybe I'll just a steady application of the brakes. Okay. Right. Um, so yeah, so he approaches on it on his camel. He's uh, he's very cautious about like keeping his hands like his hands are on the reins, but he's you know making sure that you know they're kind of like held up and out and away from his body some, so you can see that he's you know not reaching for a weapon. Exactly. Yeah, because Mr. Itchy Finger is a, is there. <laughs> it's like, uh, do you mind uh, just real quick, just let, help me orient my map? And as it comes closer, he's a guy probably in his late fifties, uh, very very weathered, uh, missing missing a couple of teeth, um, you know, sand in his hair, like covered in covered in dirt. His camel looks like it's. Uh, you know, seen some better days, but I mean, it's a camel, so. Well, like I said, that direction is concudgery. That should be enough for you and your map. Yeah, and he does like unfold a no, like he's got like a little map and he kind of like orients it. So, okay, uh, well, uh, thanks. Um, my my name's Dave. You look shaken, Dave. Oh, uh, well, I was up working, working my mine. 
Uh, I mean, it's not much, but it's, you know, mine, as they say. Uh, and after a while, you know, the, the desert gets to a man. Like, I mean, there's the heat, which I'm used to, and the occasional sandstorm, which happens. Uh, the occasional ground quake. Um, thankfully, no uh, no sinkholes. I had a friend ran uh, got lost in a sinkhole. Uh, swarms of bats. But uh, how are they? I heard that they're kind of sucky. Um. Well, I mean, the the bats are. Bats out west seem to be a little bit more, or sorry, out east were a, a little bit more aggressive than I was uh, than I was anticipating. Uh, but uh, I think I'm gonna go make my way to Kincudgery, be around some civilized folks for uh, for a little bit, and uh, decide what to do. You're leaving because the bats were more than you expected? Well, you know, a person can only take so much. I mean, the bats are one thing. Uh, the, uh... He kind of he looks at you guys and he gets this look on his face. And he kind of says, like, the, the whistling. The whistling gets to you. Like the wind whistling? No, that's just it. There was no, no breeze, just the whistling. Chris, I have seen crazy people before. So one of them is driving our car, one of our trucks. Um, does he look hey crazy? Now. Uh, give me a psychology roll. Um, can I do that as well, please? Absolutely. That's part of why I'm trying to engage him in conversation. Absolutely. Wow. <laughs> A 78, and I still can't succeed. Yeah, this is going well. Um, so yeah, I mean, he looks like somebody who's been on the road for a bit, Evelyn, probably not used to interacting with people. Uh, but uh, Alvin, uh, when he when he talks about the whistling, he he momentarily gets that uh, that like thousand yard stare, just momentarily, and then he kind of like shakes his head like he's you know remembering something he'd prefer not to remember, and then like you just catch it briefly. And wh wh where was that? And like he just points in a direction or. Oh, just around, uh, just around the lake, uh, back, uh, maybe a, a day to the east. Chris, where are we on this map? Is he pointing towards our? No, of course he's pointing toward our destination. I just want to make sure. <laughs> what was it, Lake Disappointment? Lake Disappointment. <laughs> <laughs> because. It's an excellent name. But we're going to Percival Lakes, right? Uh, yes. Yeah, because Lake Disappointment's down here. Yes. Your your plan is to head towards uh, Lake Disappointment and then catch the Canning Trail with all of the wells and everything. Follow the Canning Trail up until you get uh, just north of uh, Bungabini Well and then strike across the desert. Is that what he described? He said by the lakes? Uh, he said by the by the lake. I'm sorry, sir. What lake? Oh, um, Lake Disappointment. My uh, my mind's not far from far from there. Chris, I am not an expert overland navigator, but is there some way that we can give him other than following our car tracks, which will blow away? And he's riding a camel. Um, 
Is there any way we can kind of give him any kind of directions or any kind of like anything that won't hurt us? Like, can I give him a spare uh, boussole? No, compass or um, something? Yeah, you can. I mean, he he seems like he's good enough if he just like you know gets to reorient his map and kind of take a look at like some of the like, the uh, uh, the the dry streams and everything, kind of like figure out where exactly he is. He seems like he is skilled enough to be able to use that basic information to like plot a course. Then I give him a compass. I was like, well, thank thank you. Um, and he kind of like. Fishes or fishes around into like one of the the like packets on the his camel bags, uh, and tosses you like a like a, a f probably about the size of a loony like basically unprocessed uh, chunk of like gold ore. What? Mm, Prospect. Well, that, that's pretty fancy there. Thank you. Yeah. Well. I mean, it's a small mine, but it's, you know, it's paid off. And it's yours. And it's mine. Well, that compass is now yours, too. Good luck, good sir. Well, thank you. And then he'll kind of, like, you know, spur his camel on. As soon as we see the backside of his camel at a good distance... I finally relax, and I'm like, okay, thank God he's gone. Is he? And then you guys pick up and carry on? Right before that, I, I um, stretch my legs, take the opportunity to stretch my legs. Um, Possibly relieve myself, and then I will go over to Evelyn and uh, toss her uh, a nice nugget of ore. Say, you stop. This is yours. Yeah. Thank you, but I think it's more hours than anything. But we'll we'll tuck it away for. I think of it after. as a good luck charm. You like those things. I do like those things. Yes, that's true. We need all the good luck that we can get. We do need all the luck we can get. So what was it he said about whistling? I think it's the bats. Uh, maybe Australian bats are a bit different than bats in New York, but I don't remember any bats making a whistling sound. I mean, a very high-pitched chirping, maybe, but... And that would definitely, be the weirdest thing you've seen? Definitely scritching in the walls. And whistling bats would be the strangest things you've seen in your travels? Uh, no. No, that's true. No. I mean, if I don't... If it is bats, that means that our lookout at night is going to have to be twice as he looks around for a word, looky. <laughs> Robert, where do we plan on ending day one? Uh, well, we should be able to make the lake by nightfall. Is there some place? Is there shelter there? Uh, no, that's why we brought tents. Oh, joy. Mm -hmm. It's uh, called Lake Disappointment, eh? Uh, mm. I mean... It, al it already did. Deserve. I mean, it's a it's a salt lake, but we should be able to, to camp out near like one of the one of the freshwater wells nearby. Can I say that we're pretty lucky to have you in our party? Oh, dear. I'm uh, assuming you mean Robert. Yes. Good. I, I mean, <laughs> you can if you like. I mean, lots of lots of other, like, you know, 
newcomers make this make this trip by themselves. So I don't think you necessarily need me, but it is kind of nice to be, you know, out again. Uh, but the rest of your travel is very uneventful. It is a it is a lot of flat desert land. That is scary. Like everywhere you look, like occasionally in the distance you'll see like like somewhat larger hills in the distance, um, but it's a lot of sand. Uh, the daytime temperature does uh, peak at about 38. Uh, Black. It is it is hot. It is gross. You guys brought plenty of fuel. You brought plenty of uh, plenty of water. Um, and towards uh, towards evening, um, you can see in the distance the. Uh, basically the the well station and there's like these well stations are probably every 20 or 30 miles along the canning trail which is why so many people travel amongst them uh, so it's basically it's a it's a once you're at the trail you know water isn't as much of an issue and every couple of stops have like fuel depots so it is a fairly well maintained um, travel route for the the cattle drovers Uh, but you guys set up camp, and I assume you set watches. Yeah. We do. <clears throat> Let's see, there are five of you. Miles will sleep soundly. I'll uh, take the first one. Okay. Who is going to take the second watch? I would prefer to take the first one. I thought you took the last watch where it was almost morning, so you're not awake at midnight doing magic-y stuff because there's a full moon or something. <laughs> I mean, I can if you'd prefer. Are you worried about that happening? Well, you might have your opinion, but I think ours is stronger i'm guessing near sunrise is less of a right yeah i mean it's, it's it's calming i'd rather you be around the calming nature of the sunrise and beauteous morning and we all get to live that's fine mm -hmm. i'll take the second watch no no witching hour for evelyn apparently not and you blame us. No. <laughs> the player doesn't blame you whatsoever. Right. Uh, so Alvin can give me a listen roll. It's always the second freaking watch. That's why I took the first. Not even a little bit. Um, so yeah, so as you guys are, you know, everybody, everybody is sleeping. You know the the camp the camp has been set up um, near the well, so everybody has access to fresh water. You can like even like wash some of the dirt off and all of that sort of stuff. Um, and as you're kind of doing your like kind of routine, you know, just kind of strolling around, Alvin. Um, it's quiet, peaceful. You feel well and truly alone. That sounds like a terrible pun. Maybe. Uh, but everybody wakes up in the morning fully refreshed. That was a good night. Seems to have been. Mm 
make sure everyone's still around. Uh, yes, everybody is still here. Everybody is like up and, you know, doing basic morning camp stuff. Um, and now that you guys are on the canning trail, there is like a like a very distinct trail that can be followed. Uh, it's like it's packed down by numerous vehicles and cattle drives and everything like it's like hard pack as opposed to driving through the sand. And I thought my grandma's attic was dusty. Uh, and you guys can definitely make some uh, make some good time. Uh, once again, I will get uh, uh, whoever has the lowest luck to give me a luck roll. Oh. A success! Uh, so, uh, as you travel along the, the canning trail, periodically you do see, um, like, other other people now, like uh, folks driving cattle, and, and uh, every once in a while some of the, um, some of the native uh, uh, aboriginal people will come to the uh, come to the wells to to get fresh water and stuff before making their way back into the desert um so it's not completely deserted uh not super well populated but not completely deserted either uh and i'll get everybody to give me uh spot hidden rolls I just ruined my shoes. <laughs> oh, you rolled a one. Oh. Oh. I don't know if York has audio yet or not. Uh, he's typing. He rolled a 15. Yeah, I can roll for him, so. Right. Um, so yeah, as you guys are traveling along, uh, Evelyn and Gary and Eugene, you guys spot periodically some of these like, these like kind of larger like sandstone, um, uh, like like freestanding stone structures. Like we've all seen Wile E. Coyote cartoons. You know, the periodic, the, the, there's, there's, there's these large columns of stone. Uh, and a couple of them look like they have holes bored through them, like big holes. Like you could probably drive your truck through them holes, but they're up like 10, 15, 20, 30 feet up at the side of these stones, just bored right through them. Um, Gary, uh, what catches your attention about these is that they are perfectly smooth holes. They're not like they're Chris, not like use the term, use the term bored, and that has some implication as opposed to weathered. Yep. Is, is that chosen on purpose? Yes. Okay. Uh, but yeah, some of these holes are, like I said, like 10, 15, 20 feet off the ground, like right through these sandstone columns, limestone columns. Um, and Gary, you do notice that they are completely smooth. Like on the inside. Do you think it's the wind within there that makes the whistling noise? Uh, no. <laughs> Alvin looks befuddled. Fair enough. And Chris, you said these holes would be like big enough to drive a car through. Yep. Oof. Okay. Uh, 
Um, Mr. McKenzie. Yes? Why are there holes in these stones? I don't know. Weather, rain, not that we get much. Wind, uh, powerful enough sandstorm can like scour the paint off a truck. Time. Uh, I'm not, uh, I'm not, a, I'm an engineer, not a geologist. Well, yes, but as an engineer, that's why I thought you might have at some point taken an interest in them. Maybe not. Um, uh, I've never seen them before. You have been out here before, though. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, me, me and Arthur were out here four or five years ago. There was no holes then? Does that not strike you as something you'd remember seeing? Uh, yeah, I'm, I don't remember seeing them. Chris, I make sure my firearms are handy. Okay. I mean, that's, uh, I mean, maybe I just wasn't noticing. Maybe I was concentrating on other things at the time. I mean, it was four or five years ago. Hmm. Chris, these stone um, columns, let's call them columns, they extend 100 feet more, maybe. Yeah. Um, these holes, is there like, is it in every single one? Is it uh, just occasionally? Like, is it like, are we talking talking about like one or two holes, or is it like several dozen? Uh, it's like one or two. Okay. And the nearest one, you said it was 10, 15 feet up in the air. Is it like it's straight through so we see the sky on the other side? It's not like a cave where something might be hiding. It is straight through. Chris? Yep. Only because I'm a detective and sometimes bullets get lodged in places. Can I align the holes or are they in different places? Like, um, does it look like someone shot a gigantic bullet through a series of these columns? Uh, no, they're, they're in separate places. They're not lined up okay. at all. Okay. Thank you. Are we uh, are we staying camping here? Uh, this is probably the best place to camp, and then we'll make our way tomorrow. Uh huh. And I, I can't understand... say that. Sorry, Robert. I understand that this place is dangerous, and that's why we have tents that have zippers so everything closes, but. How dangerous would it be to sleep outside? Mm, as long as you're on the watch out for like snakes and scorpions and stuff, spiders. So inside it is. Sleep outside. Hmm. So that's what we have tents for, and it gets cold. So, for example, if someone thought it would be safer to sleep underneath a car or a truck. That would be a bad idea because snakes and scorpions would get at us. Well, it's a risk. You could just sleep inside the vehicle. That would seem less risky, wouldn't it? Yeah. Sure. I mean, I can certainly see the appeal at the moment for sleeping inside a vehicle instead of in a tent with scorpions and snakes and spiders. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm just saying like 15 feet tall, 15 feet up, flying, big enough to make a hole through a car, you could probably pick one up. I, yeah. 
But me, it's just my flight to fancy, isn't it, Robert? Well, you're not mm. a cow. Yeah, I'm going to sleep inside the truck. I, I like that idea. Okay. Um, <laughs> You and me both. <laughs> I mean, I think we've had worse sleeping arrangements uh, since we've met. I can't say that I really want to be in a tent tonight. I'll. It's gonna be too tight sleeping too in the car. I mean, possibly. I'll try to put up a tent and sleep in it. Okay. I mean, I help him put up a tent. I don't like ditch. The work just <laughs> I'm gonna sleep in your no no i mean it's thank you very much it's pretty fair of you i mean i'm i'm way too relaxed at the moment for our situation it's ridiculous uh so who is taking second to last watch Gary's taking first, you... Evelyn's taking last, and I'm taking the second. That would mean that uh, Eugene is taking the third, but he can't speak. All right. Well, then, uh, Evelyn, uh, you can give me a spot hidden roll. Oh, dear. Oh. <laughs> I can't say that that's good. I don't know that I really want to see whatever I'm going to see, but yeah. So in the wee hours of the morning, just uh, just you know, the sun is starting to crack the horizon. Um, at first, you hear this. It's like strange, like whistling sound. It sounds almost like, almost like the wind. But there's no, there's no breeze. There's no, there's no wind to, to make that sound. It sounds like it's coming from like high above you. Uh, and you kind of like look up in that direction. Kind of like glancing around. And you see what looks like. You can best describe it as a kind of a jellyfish shaped shimmer in the air. And it seems to be moving kind of the way like a plastic bag does when it's caught in the wind. So like kind of like herky jerky and kind of like all over the place, but it's whatever it is, it looks like just a jellyfish tentacled heat shimmer Chris the last time something semi invisible attacked us it forced its as you described tentacles down their throat um, <laughs> thanks for the reminder Ev Evelyn was there <laughs> and, and in a vehicle <laughs> right but I'm not seeing this but is that is that it that was that was truly invisible. This is more translucent. And those were frogish things. Mm -hmm. I think. Um, it it doesn't seem to be moving toward us or no. aware of us. Okay. No. Um, is it? interacting with those stone columns in any way well as you're watching it 
Uh, give me a luck roll. Oh. Oh dear. Oh, just barely. Um, so no, it does not seem to. It does not seem to interact with them. It just seems like it's kind of flying, floating, fluttering overhead. Uh, but as it passes overhead, that weird whistling sound goes with it. Okay. I'm just going to stay very, very still inside the truck. The rest of the night passes uneventfully. Yeah, I'll wait for an hour or two after that thing is gone before I wake everyone else up. Okay. Uh, and, uh... As everybody's up in the morning and having their breakfast stuff, Robert's like, if we follow, if we keep following the trail, we should be, should be to Bungabini by, probably by lunchtime. I'm sorry, I got a toddler to grow away, it won't be long. Okay. Bungabini? Bungabini well. Uh, that's where we're going to leave the, the trail to, to strike out uh, towards Percival Lakes. And you said we should be there around noon? Should be to the well around noon. Okay. Chris, as we travel, um, I'm going to keep out for more of those holes. Just fly. Okay. You do see them periodically. There doesn't seem to be any rhyme nor reason to them. They're at like deferring heights. Some of them are bigger in diameter than others. Did you sleep well? You mean in the uh, car? Yeah. I think my definition of well has changed over the last few months. <laughs> I did not have a nightmare and I did not wake up to combat. So, yes. Or it's scorpions in your shoes. More scorpions in my shoes. A spider crawling over you. All of those are great things not to wake up with. I, on the other hand, woke up to a jellyfish. Sort of. That was a funny like a dream. dream. No. No. Um, when you woke me up to take my watch, uh, it looked like you had already fallen asleep. Uh, and I was just waiting for the sunrise and there was sort of a I noticed the whistling first and then there was sort of a heat shimmer sort of like when we had pulled over to speak with um, Dave from the camel and you could see the heat coming off the hood of the vehicles it was like that but higher up thankfully um, and it reminded me of the shape of a jellyfish that looks like what I've seen seen where? and when it moved off the whistling moved off when I told you that I've seen a shimmering moving up in the air that looked like vapor or something. Was there a noise? I don't remember you mentioning a noise. No, I didn't hear anything. I mean, I just saw some shimmering that was like 
vaguely the shape of something moving slowly in the air. Forget it. <laughs> no. No, I don't think I will. Chris, can I think of anything from the books that sounds like that? Uh, you can make a Cthulhu Mythos roll. Because that... It, it's not sounding familiar at all. Oh, Evelyn. Not so much. Not so much. <laughs> Nothing sounds for me. Mr. McKenzie. Yes. Have you heard of anything like this before? Not in particular, no. I mean... There, there, there are stories that you hear. I mean, the the, the natives have their uh, have their stories and their mythology. People have gone heat crazed. Uh, will tell all kinds of uh, things. I mean, kind of like uh, kind of like poor uh, poor Dave there. You know, people. Uh... Chris, is he justifying or does he actually believe that? Make a psychology roll. I like I you, that well. too. Uh, yes, absolutely. <laughs> We're all paying close attention to our local guide. <laughs> I won't spend the four luck. I mean, okay. that's just the way it is. Uh, yeah, Evelyn. Um, it sounds like a, he, he's definitely heard stories. He doesn't put a lot of credence in them. He's a man of science. How fucking convenient. Can you hear me all right? Oh, yay. Yes. Oh, God. Sorry. <laughs> I <I'm> fucking leave. <laughs> what did you do? Did you go out and buy a new headset? Like, what's going on? Uh, yeah, I went uh, to see some friends to borrow some uh, some headset. Uh, I, I, I had uh, headphones that didn't have a mic, so I could listen, but I couldn't speak. Uh, and I went out to see some friends that I could borrow a headset from. So, yeah. <laughs> so I was running to just try to get back into the conversation. Does Amazon uh, not release. deliver in your area? Like, do we need to? We appreciate like, your dedication. <laughs> they probably don't deliver within the hour. No. <laughs> I mean, or maybe you know, Quebec is way more advanced than New Brunswick. Well. Probably. Uber headphone but... doesn't exist yet, I think. <laughs> it might be shady, the, the headphone I found are... But it should work. Sorry about that. No worries. You sound fine. I'm glad I do. Of course, I've probably jinxed it now, but... <laughs> you know, me and technology will... It's, it's like you and Dice. <laughs> you fucked. <laughs> it works. But it doesn't like me. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Um, so yeah, as you guys travel and, you know, Evelyn's trying to think of anything that she may have read about uh, that could explain this uh, this whistling sound and these, uh, these uh, translucent things that both her and Gary have seen now. Nothing comes to mind. Um, I mean, the books, the books were vague in a lot of things. Uh, but uh, Robert will tell you that um, once we once we leave uh, Bungabini well, we're able to take the trucks, uh, but we're gonna have to do probably the last twenty miles or so on foot uh, to get to the to get to the location. Um, so we'll take the trucks as far as we can, or do we want to leave them on the trail? Oh, on foot sounds miserable. Just saying. Um, uh, 
on on the trail where? Well, I mean, just park them. Nobody's going to steal them. I think we should take them as far as we can. Okay. I mean, I don't, I don't look forward to like a sixty-mile walk through the desert. Twenty, twenty is bad enough. Uh, neither do I. <laughs> that is. I mean, it would be easier now than it would have been a year ago, but that still sounds incredibly unpleasant. <laughs> yeah, that would not have been nice with uh, your mm. prior condition. Mm -hmm. Quite. Quite. Peru is bad enough. Yeah, and it's not that dry of a heat. Mm -mm. And if we need to leave quickly, the closer the vehicles are, the better. Uh, that's very true. All right. Uh, so as you guys, like I said, about noon, you get to the, the well. And Robert's like, okay. Does Robert judge us because we seem to be overly cautious about everything? So... Is he like wary of us, or no? No, he's uh, he's here for to, to basically to explore the city. He's happy that he has people. If you guys want to be cautious, he's like excellent. He'd he'd, he'd rather you are cautious than not cautious. Uh, and I'll get Evelyn to give me a drive roll. Uh, Gary can give me one too, but Gary, you'll have a bonus die because Evelyn's the one that's like breaking ground. Indeed I am. I have coffee and alcohol to deliver. Uh, roll one more d10 because you should have had a bonus die on that. Oh, so it would be a 15 instead, which is a success. Right. Uh, so yeah, so Evelyn turns off road and it is it is a very different experience. I mean, when you're driving through the, the desert to get to the canning trail, at least the parts of it were like hard packed. Uh, and then the trail is kind of spoiled you over the last day and a half or so. But now that you're in like just like loose sand, it is. It, it's troublesome. Uh, but you get the the trucks, and you, you go probably about another thirty miles or so before um, the the train is starting to give way to more um, like more gullies and ravines and less hard packed or soft packed desert. Um, and some of the ravines are just too narrow for the truck, uh, which means you're going to have to huff it for about twenty miles. Is anybody staying behind with the trucks, or is everybody going? What would be the benefit of staying someone behind with the trucks versus going? No, there isn't one, really. But it's called a Cthulhu, so sometimes people are like, eh, go ahead, guys. <laughs> <laughs> That's such a Gary play. <laughs> ah, Gary's going to come. He's just, he might not stay, but he's coming. We'll leave Miles with the trucks. Miles will stay with the trucks for the time being. <laughs> I would have come willingly. Okay. And yes, I would have run at the first occasion. <laughs> All right. So everybody kind of like picks up, picks up some gear, grabs a pack, grabs some water and some food. Alcohol and coffee. Alcohol and coffee. You start making your way into the desert off the trail, and like I said, this is much more like uh, like ravines and uh, and deep gullies as opposed to the the sands and the dunes. Chris, you didn't specifically specify specifically specify, but we also take weapons and bullets, right? Yep. 
right. You guys take your gear. So I tie my running shoes very tightly. Yeah, I like how <laughs> I like how tying our shoes has now been equivalent to being armed, considering how this game has gone. But yes, <laughs> just making sure. Um, and as you guys start making your way, uh, I'll get everybody to give me a listen roll. Whew, Alvin is sharp indeed. I almost rolled a two, which turned at the last second. <laughs> So everybody except for Evelyn, uh, as you guys are making way, and you're probably you travel for like you know five or six miles through this ravine-filled terrain, uh, like the dried-out stream beds, dried-out river beds, uh, that sort of thing. Uh, and Alvin and Gary and Eugene, uh, you can hear like a like a flapping sound. Uh, Alvin, with your with your uh, hard success, it sounds like um, it sounds like uh, the the sound like fabric makes flapping in the wind. I thought you were you started with F. I thought you were going to say it sounds like fire bats. Yeah, um, and it, it's coming from like twenty or thirty feet, kind of like around a bend in the ravine. It's not coming from above or anything of that nature. So like like tattered flags kind of deal or flapping in the wind? That sort of sound, yeah. Okay. Tell everyone to be wary. What are we expecting to find here? Of what? Uh, well, you guys are about, at this point, probably about 15-ish miles from where uh, where McGuire's coordinates are for the, uh, the stone, standing stones that he had found that may indicate a lost city. Right. So... I tell everyone to stop and say, I think someone's already here. Let's be quiet and careful. What makes you say that? It's just something I hear on the wind. Yeah, like fabric? Yeah, like fabric. Generally means tents or an encampment of some kind. Maybe clothes drying? I don't know. Maybe I should go ahead. Uh, Chris can I go ahead? Is there enough cover if I wanted to to move ahead? There absolutely is, yes. Okay, wait here. I'll be right back. Um, so yeah, as you're kind of making your way kind of like around the bend, you can see what looks like um, there's like maybe half a dozen or so uh, like ragged looking tents. The the fabric from the tents the, the canvas is like flapping in the like the little bit of a breeze uh there's some like stacks of crates there's a there's like a tiny little shack uh marked that says like explosives on the uh the door that's hanging open um relatively close to like your side of things there is a an old ford truck uh smaller than your trucks um it is squashed and broken. Squashed? Squashed. Hey, Chris, oh, already stealth, just in case there. Uh, yep. Sorry, I'm being D brain look, took over because I'm being overly cautious again. Okay. Um, like stepped on, or like a rock fell on it, and for some reason that rock is not there anymore? Um, more stepped on. Does it look like there's anybody around? Give me like a spot hidden roll. You fail to see the giant. Yeah, that's kind of what I'm expecting. Woo, another eight. Extreme success. Uh, you don't see any sign of pe people. You do see uh, some uh, bones scattered about. Uh, definitely human bones. Right. But no giants about. You do not see any giants. 
Is there anywhere a giant could hide, like a giant cave? Uh, no. There is, though, with your spot hidden, there is one tent that uh, looks like it has been... It was torn apart like the others, and then sewn back together. All right, I'm going to go back to the group and uh, say uh, like something. Yeah, with that, there might be some implication there. Sorry, you cut out what? That there, I said, um, looks like some people were there, but it looks like something terrible happened, and let's keep our wits about us, just in case whatever happened is still around. And then we go in, Chris. I'm assuming we're going in. I'm, I'm leading. I'm following a revolver in hand. Um, so yeah, as you guys kind of make your way, and it does look like it was like maybe maybe a little like a mining camp or something, like half a dozen or so tents, mostly torn apart. There's the one that's been repaired uh, and is in in good shape. Uh, there is uh, the wooden shack uh, that has like explosives written on the door, and the door is hanging like askew. And then there is the squashed Ford truck. Chris, now that I'm here, now that I'm here in the open, can I take a better look at the truck? Uh, absolutely, you can. Hmm, give me a tracking roll. Where's Miles when you need him? Oh, rolled to twelve. Never mind. Um. So yeah, as you kind of like make your way over to the truck. Uh, and from the truck, you can see kind of further back a little bit away from the camp, kind of like hidden from sight at the camp, but you can see it from where the truck is. Uh, there is a, uh, a small wooden structure that has a bunch of machinery that seems to be attached to the roof. Uh, but as you're looking over the, the squashed car, you can see what look like basically kind of like a giant like a giant claw you can see like the heel print on one side of the truck and the five claw marks on the other side of the truck you say claw marks but like what do you how big are these claw marks well the truck is in the middle of the footprint So the claws are hmm, maybe six-ish feet long. Maybe three. Three sounds like a good number. So yeah, the claw marks are about the size of your forearm. What are we doing? Chris? Yep. Alvin is not a learned man, but things with claws as long as your forearm seems like... It... Yeah, uh, Alvin, with that tracking roll, you would guess that something very large and very strong and probably very heavy stepped on the truck. Uh, Jaime wants to say dinosaur, question mark, but I don't know what Alvin's interpretation is of that. Well, it's Australia, so it's possible. Chris, is there a way to guesstimate how big something like that would have had to have been? Uh, I mean, its foot would have had to have been probably... 
close to 15 feet from heel to top claw tip. And it would have been heavy enough to squash a truck. So, like 15 feet, one foot versus six, so six times taller. So if it was a human, it would be 30, 60, 90, 100 feet tall? Hmm, possibly. And I imagine everybody can see Alvin, like, looking at the wreckage and doing the mental math and pacing to measure things. I'll let the, the others search. Sorry, what was that, Anita? Oh, Evelyn's watching Alvin. What are you doing? Um, I'm scaring myself and to think what could have left a footprint this large. Yeah, that's a worrying face. Why do you do a worrying face? Well, this is a footprint. Chris, I scored really well in my tracking. Is mm -hmm. this a singular footprint or is are there tracks? Uh, no, it is singular. Like the finger of God, or in this case, the footstep of God's alleged <laughs> one off. Yep. It's not that it's gigantic. It's the fact that there isn't any other ones around. You figure if it had left one, there would have been a second one to stand on at least. And then, and then I look around, I point around, and it's like, but nothing. Well, how? how Sorry, did you question? say footprint? I, I walk around the car, and I very clearly show with my finger, like, the outline of the footprint. Oh. Uh. Uh, all right. Um, we'll assume for a moment that's a footprint and not some creative use of explosives or something. Um, how long would its stride be? I would know if there was a second one. There isn't. It's like a giant foot fell from the sky. Well, there isn't one beside it, but... Oh, you mean... Oh, that's a good call. Chris, I'm going to go How? in the opposite direction of the toes are pointing, and I'm going to jog ahead to see if there's another footprint over there. Uh, there is not. I'm going to take a while he's doing that, I'm going to take a closer look at the truck. Okay. It is smooshed. Uh, but you can give me a mechanical repair roll. <laughs> yeah, because that's what I'm known for. With my 10. You can rebuild it. <laughs> Not even close. It's a smooshed truck. It is a smoosh truck. I... Looking around this area, um, are there any footprints or drag marks or vehicle tracks or anything other than ours make a uh, and this apparently giant footprint <laughs> um as you as you're like spreading out to look around uh you do see uh some human footprints that are very recent uh and some uh some canine footprints mm -hmm. 
Okay. They seem to be they seem to be uh, focused around the uh, the still intact tent. Okay. I do not want to approach that tent. I'm going back to the vehicle. Okay. Are there any vehicle tracks around it? Or does it look more like it was dropped there? Um, give me a spot hidden. Uh, no, the, the, it looks, it looks like it was stepped on. Okay. Meanwhile, I'll get, uh, Gary and Eugene, who've been hanging back for the time being, to give me a spot hidden rolls. Yep, those shoes are ruined. Okay. Um, so yeah. Uh, oh, and uh, Evelyn, like I said, from the from the truck, you can see that other like kind of intact wooden building with the machinery seeming to be attached to the roof. Seem to be attached to the roof of what? Like the, there's like another intact building. Okay. Okay. And it has machinery on the roof. Okay. But we haven't heard any people voices yet. None. Even though we have undoubtedly been making noise. Yep. Um, Eugene, Gary. Yeah, what? Since, since I assume that uh, Alvin is a little bit away looking for large tracks. Um, there are human tracks and dog prints or some other kind of canine prints, um, over around that tent, but no one has come out and we haven't exactly been quiet. Well, uh, guns at the uh, gun at the ready. Uh, Gary will move toward uh, the tent. All right. It is a it is a tent. What's in it? So when you open it up, uh, inside you see uh, bits of clothing, some uh, like like boxes of matches, some uh, canned foods and some empty cans, uh, a couple of lanterns, a couple of jugs of kerosene, um, all of which like it seems like it's lived in. But as you open up the tent from somewhere like up in the kind of the, the, the hills that make up this little ravine, you hear this voice like, hey, get away from my stuff. Again, with a very, very heavy Australian accent. Are you the proprietor of the foot that did this to the truck? Are you turning around to look? Yep. All right. So as you turn around to look, you can see standing on like one of the little like hillocks. Uh, just like just like 
absolutely like not emaciated but very thin uh man like long scraggly hair like you know several days worth of of beard uh naked as the day he was born other than his shoes uh and uh the eight wild dogs that are standing beside him eight wild dogs you said dingoes even it's like get back spawn of satan i'm sorry what back to the depths of hell you came from eventually sure away from my stuff or my friends here will eat you Chris in retrospect that footprint was it a canine print no can the rest of us hear this guy's voice too oh yeah he's yelling okay uh Evelyn will look up yelp and look away <laughs> Is the sun very good for your modesty, sir? <laughs> mm. Oh my. There's a lady here. Well. <laughs> well, woman. Oh dear. Mm. You're more of those folks that Carver sent, aren't you? Devil spawn. I mean, as a Jew man, I've been called the worst, but not quite. You're not working for Carver? Not that I know of. I now look at my compatriots. Are we? Nope. And we're not working for anyone. Really. In memory mm. of, maybe. For, for the good of mankind? <laughs> yeah, well, explain it to uh, Dingo the Dingling Ding. <laughs> and he he will like come down off the hillock and, and start to approach. Okay. And, and the, the Dingoes follow him. Uh. Chris, I ask this a lot and I feel like I shouldn't because it's <laughs> obvious, but is he crazy? <laughs> oh. he, he's buck naked except for his shoes walking around with a pack of wild dogs. <laughs> uh, I know that. I meant like now I'm asking, like, he's got a pack of, like, wild dingoes that follow him everywhere. And the last time I saw something creepy like that, like, it involved bad magic and a giant ritual, but whatever. Uh, you can, uh, folks can make psychology rolls. I'm pretty sure that he's technically nuts. <laughs> I wouldn't hold up. <laughs> uh, uh, so yeah, Gary and uh, Gary and Evelyn. Uh, yeah, this uh, this gentleman uh, does not seem to have a really good grasp on uh, either either sanity or hygiene. He he certainly seems to have a pair. Um. Uh, but, uh, Evelyn, um, those dogs, they're, like, when he looks in a direction, the dogs kind of, like, look in that direction as well. Like, he, he is definitely friends with these, uh, these wild dogs. Would he be the leader of the pack? It's Master possible. Commander. So you're not working for that American, then? 
I mean, I am American, but I'm not working for anyone else. Hmm. No, we were um, out here looking for something, and... Uh... Sir, do you need pants? Why? Please? Ah. Uh... Because we're in the company of a lady? Didn't ask for any company. Fair. That's that's fair. Um Well, if uh if you're fine, maybe we should just go on. Um mm -hmm. And Evelyn still kind of has her back turned anytime she turns toward him like when she was checking the dogs and things she kind of holds her hand up so that she's there's some modesty there even if it's unwilling on his part right. and yeah and as he kind of walks towards you kind of like absently reaches down and picks up like uh like i said there were a bunch of skeletons and stuff around he kind of like reaches down picks up like a thigh bone just kind of tosses it to play fetch with the dogs uh, a human thigh bone? Mm -hmm. That guy is dangerous. Uh-huh. Uh, I take it that was the last person that Clark sent out here? Mm, cover sent some men, but uh, my friends ate two of them, and now they don't come back. I thought maybe, I thought maybe he'd uh, send some more folks. Who's Carver? <laughs> I don't know, but he's. He's any part they're of They're not the friends. Chris, was he part of the expedition? A car have we heard of a Carver before? Uh, you have, when you were uh, in. Uh, yeah. Sorry, um, Evelyn, you said where? I, I don't have another carver in my notes. Nope. <laughs> uh, I'm, so I don't, I don't know when or where. Uh, it might have been Miles that picked up that, uh, that particular tidbit. Uh, but yes, um, Carver was, uh, was an American in Concudgery in Port Headland who had hired some people to work a gold mine. Pay them, pay them a bunch of money just to dig holes. Oh, yeah, that dude. Oh, that guy. Okay. Pity we left Miles with the truck. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this uh, this guy, he, he you know, plays some fetch with his dingoes and makes his way to his tent, which is, grabs like a, a can of beans, opens it, kind of like offers it around. I'm sorry, what? Grabs like a can of beans out of his tent and then opens it up. And, like, grabs a grabs a spoon, takes like a mouthful, hands it around. <laughs> no thanks. I'm fine. Okay. Would you like some slightly fresher food? Say we trade it to you. Tell us what the hell's going on here. Well, I mean, I just opened this can. I mean, you can eat it and other food. Mm. What sort of food? Like toast and Vegemite. I, I, I don't know what we brought. I could use some new supplies. That's true. I mean, otherwise I'm going to have to adopt their diet and the cover doesn't have that many men. And he kind of smiles. Yeah, let's not have that. Hmm. Actually, he might have that many. Yeah. I mean, there's a bunch of us that he hired first time. Us? Yeah, uh... 
well, a couple of years back now, I think. Uh, I don't know. I've been out here for a little bit. Uh, but uh, this uh, carver um, said he had like a, a map to like a, a, a gold strike. Uh, I'm not going to lie, he was shifty, but what boss isn't? Uh, but he was, wanted to pay straight up sign up bonus, so, you know, works work. About 20 of us decided to uh, to sign on. Figured, you know, we'd come out, we'd work until his cash ran out, and then come back to town. You know how it is, one job, then the other. Sure. And the whole time he's talking, he's like just kind of like squatting down, eating his beans out of his can. Yep, Evelyn is not looking. <laughs> Every once in a while, he like you know passes a spoon to one of the dingoes. Oh, I'm having a uh, oh. have internet problem. Okay. Uh, so uh, anyway, he got us out here like digging holes, like at, at a very exact spot. His he said his his research was infallible, again and again and again. Uh, but we made sure we got paid to the day because uh, can't trust those folks. So we dug, uh, dug uh, sand, sediment, rock. Uh, then his money ran out. So, you know, no work, no pay. Uh, so we uh, decided to wait for a supply truck for country to take us back. Uh, meanwhile, uh, Carver started uh, acting strange, you know, walk into the desert, talk to, the, talk to invisible men. You know, making gestures, you know, talking you know, crazy talk. Not like us, and he reaches out and scratches his, like, wild dog behind the ears. Uh, then he disappeared for an entire day and part of another. Um, uh, he uh, disappeared for, like, a day, a day and a bit. Came back, and his eyes were all, like, wild and crazy-like. I uh, told him that God had shown him away. He, uh, one of the one of the men said something about you know wanting his wages because we had to wait for the trucks. Um, Carver jumped and said that he'd uh, he'd murder us all, uh, and then kind of came to his senses and said, "If that's how you feel, let me show you something." And he walked into the desert. Um, we didn't follow. A couple of nights after that, a couple of fellows playing cards. They caught me cheating. Um, I ran from them, hid in the bushes. Um, when I was coming back to camp later, I saw Carver appear in the wall of rock, uh, kind of gestures. And then this uh, great winged thing with talons like ropes descended from the sky. There was a cracking sound, uh, like a voice. Uh, one of the men tried to run off. The thing grabbed and ripped him apart. Uh, I buried my face in the sand, covered my ears. And when I looked up, uh, all the men were bowing to Carver and he was leading them away straight into the desert. And I was like, that is nope. So I left. I am not up to meeting devil man and his demon. Uh huh. Uh. I don't know what to say about that. Ah. Uh. Is that what happened to your truck? Bring up a flying demon thing. Uh huh. He like holds out the can of beans to Evelyn. No, thank you. That's that's quite okay. I I had breakfast. I'm good. <laughs> um. Which way did they go? I and mean, he's kind of done, like gestures vaguely with a spoon, like as he does, like you know, bean juice flips off it. Mm -hmm. Is he pointing in the direction we're 
going? Yes, he is. Mm-hmm. And you said he took 20 or so people with him? Yeah, uh, I mean, everybody but me. And doesn't count the guys that you, well, that you friends ate? Uh, well, you sent a couple people here to, uh, I'll pick up some, uh, to clear up the dynamite. Um, t- took what they could for supplies, other things I stashed away. Um, but, uh, some of them went to, to go in my tent, so, uh. We took care of them. So they know not to come back. And I'm sorry, sir. uh, I didn't get your name. Uh, 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 Grogan. Uh, Jer- Jeremy Grogan. It's weird. I haven't heard that. I haven't used my name in years now. Years? How long have you been out here? Mm-hmm. Came out here with Carver about four years ago. How do you keep track of time? Mm-hmm. He points up at the sun. And then... He goes into his tent and he he brings out like a like a little notebook that's got like a bunch of tally marks. Alvin resists the urge to say that's awfully sane of you. <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of tally marks there. Yeah. Yeah, 1200 or so. Probably closer to 14. Um, uh, where are you getting water? Oh. He kind of looks... He kind of motions for you to to follow him. Oh, she is absolutely not. <laughs> she's she is barely looking at him, and she's like holding her hand up so that his only down to like mid chest and knees down is visible. <laughs> there is far more of this man on display than she wants to see. <laughs> So when uh, when I wandered off into the, the desert to get away from from Carver, uh, after a while I'm tired, hungry. I found some shade, lay down, slept. But I, I dreamed uh, dreamed about water. Uh, I mean, I was thirsty, dreamt of cool water and, and peace. Uh, and when I woke up, there was a spring of pure water, uh, just like in my dreams. So I say it. Oh, why is Miles not here? This would be perfect for Mark. Hmm. Yeah, it would, wouldn't it? Um, so you dreamed of something and it came true. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, maybe the water was there and I just didn't see it. I don't know. I mean, that's possible. So, when you go back to to Carver, are you going to tell him that you found me? We've never met. We've never met Carver. We wouldn't know him if we saw him. Okay. And as you said, you notice that the uh, some of the dingoes were like very carefully starting to encircle you, and then they start backing away again. I, mean, I totally understand the fact that you are uh, doubtful of us, but I mean, you outnumber us quite 
helped a lot. If you haven't seen him in years, and he's wandered out somewhere that way into the desert, I imagine he's dead by now, isn't he? Maybe? I don't know. I haven't gone looking. I mean, you're here, obviously, but you have water and um, companionship and tents. Hmm. I can't leave my friends. Uh Uh-huh. That 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 wouldn't be nice. Exactly. He's cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. Um, you and your friends haven't seen any other strange things out here, have you? Mm, strange demon bird devil thing? Mm, nope, that's it. No jellyfish thermotranslucent flying in the air? Nope. No strange heat shimmers where they shouldn't be. Doesn't sound familiar. Have you heard a whistling sound at night? Oh, all the time. Mm. Are you normally in your tent by then? Mm, Sometimes. If the whistling gets really bad, I go to my magic circle. I'm sorry, you're what? My magic circle. Of course you have magic circle. Your magic circle? Mm Mm-hmm. What's that? Uh, It's a circle I made with magic rocks that protects me from my enemies. Oh. Is that something you dreamt of and then became true as well? Mm. Well, I thought it sounded like a good idea, so I did it. Uh, I mean, that's fair-ish. If I had magic rocks, I would probably use them. You can't have mine. In a similar way. I'm not asking for them. Nope. Um, Regular salt has usually been enough for me. Um, But... Ah... If I run out of salt, um, are there more magic rocks around? No. Oh. Did you make them magic, or were they magic before you found them? They were magic when I found them. How did you know? That's why I picked them up. I'm not going to pick up any old rock. That would be crazy. I mean, when you're in a place surrounded by rock, um, how did you know which ones were magic? They spoke to me. That would definitely make them magical. So if we made that carver, you're not here. We never met you. Is that it? Uh, Why, are you going to go report to carver that you found me? We just told you no. We've never met the man. Or whatever he is now. Carver is evil. He's the devil. He went into the desert and came back changed. I'll take your word for it. If you find the devil, you cast him back to hell. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I have more questions. 
I, I sort of do. I'm a little anxious about asking him. Um, is your magic circle inside your tent? No. I, I haven't seen it, so I don't know. Well, I'm follow, just wondering. Follow me, I can show you. Okay. I'm not letting her go alone. Uh, thank you. <laughs> I was going to say, Evelyn looks back at Elvin. <laughs> uh, so, um, she's keeping her hand up so that she's not just staring at this guy's ass as they're walking along. Um, so what does, what does being in your magic circle do? Mm. How do the rocks protect you? It keeps me safe from my enemies. Well, yes, but that's a bit vague. I, um, I dabble in a bit of magic myself. <clears throat> um, but I've always used salt for magic circles. Mm. Uh, Are you a witch? No. No, just someone who knows things. You have truck with the devil? No, definitely not. Salt keeps that sort of thing out. At least for me. That's why I'm sort of curious about your magic circle and how it works and what it does to keep you safe. Um, but yes, he will lead uh, you. Uh, he and the dingoes will lead you and Alvin and everybody else who's going. Uh, and yeah, kind of like, just basically just kind of like over a little rise and down into a little gully, kind of like underneath a little outcropping. Not far at all from the camp. Um, and two, you notice two things. One is there is like a little like kind of spring that's coming out of the, the wall of the the gully uh and there's like a basically like a basin kind of nailed to the to catch the water and then any overflow flowed back into the into the ground uh and there is like a little there's a, a circle of of stones that look like just absolutely ordinary rocks in a quasi circle <laughs> like if somebody was eyeballing a circle with no actual measurements or anything so Sorry, this is exposed? There's no... Or was it inside a... No, it's exposed. It's just like right there on the ground underneath this outcropping. Um... Do they glow? Like, is there anything special about that? Nope. The only difference between them and any of the hundreds of other rocks around are the fact that they are in some <laughs> semblance of a circle. Uh, so Mr. Grogan. Jeremy. Uh, Evelyn. Um, how do they protect you? Well, I stand in or sit in the middle and then my enemies can't get me. Does anything in there reminds me of anything <sighs> mystical or magical or is he just insane? Uh, you guys can make a cult rolls. I um, mean, yeah. if it's effective. If it's worked so far. Insanity must be effective. <laughs> That's the thing. Bars, as the kid says. <laughs> I rolled exactly what I needed. <laughs> Talk about magic. Uh, so yeah, Evelyn, there's there's nothing here that looks even remotely occultish. I mean, honestly, salt doesn't look terribly magical either. So, 
I, I can't really judge. There's, there's not much difference between the salt in a diner and the salt that Evelyn uses to cast a circle. So, meh. Alvin asked him, are, um, are they speaking to you now? No. Uh, they, they spoke to me at first, and then they, they told me to what I had to do. Uh, but then after, uh, after the sacrifice, then they went quiet again. Oh. Uh, sorry, the sacrifice? But yes, you need sacrifice to make magic happen. God told me that. He's not wrong. Um, d- um, does God have another name? Or just God? I don't know. I was just wondering if he had said something, if he was... If he had clarified that. No. He said, Jeremy, you have proven yourself, and I will teach you how to protect yourself, but you must make a sacrifice unto me. So when Carver sent his men, I was like, there there is no more worthy sacrifice. Mm -hmm. Uh, So, uh, so Carver's men fueled my protection and then my friends ate them nothing uh, is lost yeah right um so i after um After you made your circle and uh, sacrifice, uh, you've you've heard the whistling since then. Oh yes, and you've come out to your circle. Mm-hmm. And then what happened? Mm, nothing, because my circle protects me. Okay. Um, and what happened the nights you stayed in your tent when you heard the whistling? I don't. If I hear the whistling, I come to my circle. Oh. So you've always come out to the circle. Mm-hmm. Okay. There's no point in having a magic circle to protect you if you don't use it. That's absolutely true. I could not agree more. I wouldn't want the sacrifice to be in vain. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right. Did, um... Have you heard anyone else speak? Other than God? And... Carver. Mm, you guys. We are definitely real, and we definitely are talking to you. Mm-hmm. I mean, Carver said that God had showed him where to dig. But... I mean, maybe God told him different things than God told me. Obviously, if he didn't tell you to dig anything. Or someone else entirely was speaking to... I don't think Carver was talking to God. I think Carver was speaking with the devil. It certainly sounds that way. But if you're not here from Carver, maybe God has sent you to kill him. Stranger things have happened. Maybe you've been sent by heaven to cast the devil down. Maybe. 
And if that were the case, how would we start doing that? Well, he went that way. The Lord's works in mysterious ways. That is very true. Oh, my friend, it is so. <laughs> well, uh, we should get back to doing the Lord's work then. And Evelyn will like stare at Gary and Alvin when she says that. Oh yeah, <laughs> most that definitely. <laughs> On a scale of one to yes, we're at fuck yeah. Thank you for showing me your magic circle. I do appreciate it. I will keep an eye out for rocks that seem magical as we continue traveling. Until uh, basically get some water, you know, kind of like cup it in his hands, let the dogs drink from it sort of thing. Foundry is completely stuck for me. Never managed to roll a cult. But, you know. Oh, it is what it is. oh no. <laughs> I was, I've been trying to click on it, but it's just not. I not think that happening. guy read too many books. Uh, I doubt that this fellow. Well, um. He did have a notebook that he left tally marks in. Did, uh, did Carver leave any books behind? Did he have notebooks or anything that he was looking at? Oh, he had all kinds of notebooks. Did he? Oh, there's your occult roll. <laughs> Thank you. Ed. Just a little delayed. Thank you, Internet Explorer. A little delayed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm having an Explorer moment. <laughs> um, did he take them with him, or did he leave those behind? Oh no, he took everything with him. Oh, so he okay. took all of his notes, he took the dynamite, he took a bunch of food. Oh. Dynamite. Great. Lovely. Ah. Uh, right. What's the, um, machine for and evelyn is trying to kind of slide her way back toward the campsite again oh that's the that's the hole that we dug the machine oh that the machine is to make the thing go up and down <laughs> 